I guess this is going to be an ASMR video because it's just going to keep raining and that it is what it is. Hey book besties, my name is Angie, this is my channel, maybe I'll read today where we talk about books that I may or may not have read. Today we're going to be doing a book haul. And I know my first book haul on this channel was titled something like first and last book haul of 2022, but hey, guess what? I lied. I have zero self-control and so I lied to you. I went on the internet and I lied. And I'm the first person in the world who went on the internet just to lie. But yeah, I bought some books recently and I'm just gonna share them with you. I'm, I'm really excited about all of these books. They seem super neat. So the first book that I got was Pure Color by Sheila Hetty. This was recommended to me by Leah, who's also on booktube, and I will link their channel down below. They're very cool and very smart and read really cool books. And this was one of them. And this book is described as a contemporary Bible and it explores things like death, love, art, time, loss, life, all that good stuff. And it's relatively short, so I think it's gonna be a very like compact and and dense and thoughtful book, which is exactly why I haven't picked it up yet because I have been going through it recently and not going through it in necessarily a completely bad way, just going through it in, in the way that a lot of things have been changing in my life and I've, I've, I need some time to adjust. And so I just don't think I'm in the headspace to pick this book up and, and really take it in and really appreciate it and really be able to annotate it and, and be critical and think and soak it in. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks and or months I will finally be at a space where I can appreciate it for what it is. But yeah, it's described as a contemporary Bible and it's like a creation origin story, which is like something that I'm super interested in as an ex-Catholic. But yeah, just not the time yet, but it will be soon. I believe in myself. Next book I got was A Wild Winter Swan by Gregory Maguire. This I got because of the cover because I thought the cover was so cute, it's a little snow globe. But this follows Laura who lives with their grandparents and one night they find a boy on the roof of their building and this boy has a swan wing for his left arm. And so it follows Laura as they are trying to hide this boy and as their family is like facing financial troubles. And it says it's a story about class, isolation, family, and all that good stuff. I also picked it up because when I read the description it reminded me of the Sailor Moon arc where uh, Chibiusa becomes friends with like a Pegasus boy and she like keeps it a secret from all the other Sailor Scouts and she has her own like side plot coming of age arc and so it just kind of gave me that vibes and I really love Sailor Moon and especially Chibiusa so I was like I want to I want to get into this because it reminds me of that and I really like that. But I don't know when I'm going to pick this up. I kind of want to pick it up soon, but it's also a Christmas story. It's like set during Christmas time. So I kind of want to wait until like Christmassy times to like get into it. I haven't decided yet. Apparently it's a signed copy as well, which is it would be more exciting if I knew who Gregory Maguire was, but there it is. Nice. The next book I got, I wasn't planning on getting it anytime soon. I was actually going to wait a while before I got this copy, but I was at work one day and my work computer stopped working and I got really frustrated and I went on a walk and I just happened to end up at the local Barnes and Nobles, which was like three blocks away. And I was like, well, since I'm here, I might as well browse. I might as well swap. Anyways, so I got The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. This is the second book in the Dandelion Dynasty series. I am currently reading The Grace of Kings, which is the first book, and I have about 200 pages left. It started off really slow and really confusing because they had to introduce a bunch of characters and a bunch of uh, politics and a bunch of different towns and cities and empires and kingdoms, etc, etc. But now I'm like in the middle of everything and so everything just like flows and everything is wild and everything is really good. And so I knew I wanted to continue the series and since they just happened to have a copy, I was like, might as well. I accidentally skimmed the back of it when I picked it up and so I kind of know how the first book ends. So I can't, it, these are spoilers, so I'm not gonna tell you what this book is about because spoilers. But I'm definitely gonna take my time with the series because I want to make sure I get all of the copies in paperback just so that they look nice on my bookshelf, which isn't the case for a lot of series that I own. And if you just like look, look right here at the diviners, I have the first two paperback, the last two uh, hardcover. The same thing happened with the Poppy War. My first Poppy War book is 
a paperback and then the next two are hardcover. This one doesn't look that bad because they have at least the same cover art. The Poppy War, the colors are different and so it looks a little dumb. And I know the solution is just to buy the hardcover of the first book, but all of my notes and annotations are in the, the paperback copy and so I don't want to like replace it and I don't want two of the same book if I'm only going to read the paperback if I ever reread it and when I do reread it. So whatever, it just looks kind of dumb, but for this one I'm going to plan accordingly and I'm going to make sure I get all of the paperback copies. And I think the fourth one just came out hardcover and so I'm going to take my time with this and then when I get to the fourth one, hopefully by then the paperback copy is already out. We'll see, but this is the second one. I'm really excited to continue the series. I just have to finish the first one first. Next book that I got was Scattered All Over the Earth by Yoko Tawada. This takes place in the near future. Due to global warming and rising sea levels, Japan no longer exists. And so it follows our protagonist who is Japanese and is trying to find other Japanese people who speak Japanese and like be able to connect with them through their mother tongue. And from what I can tell, they like travel around the world, they meet new people, gain new perspectives, things like that. And it's apparently a trilogy, so this is the first of the trilogy. I found out about this book because of someone I follow on Bookstagram. Their handle is The Nerdy Barista, and I'll also link them down below if you're interested. They always have amazing book recommendations, and all of them are written by Asian authors. So as soon as they mentioned this book and, and gave it a raving review, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get my hands on this. I also picked up Astral Season B beastly season because of them and that was one of my favorite books of last year so like their taste is just immaculate whenever they they review a book I'm like I'm here for it next book I got was The Walking Cat which is a manga which I only just realized is a play on The Walking Dead that that little that little zombie series that only a few people that little independent independently produced zombie series that's on that um tiny little channel called AMC. Anyways, this is a zombie story in the perspective of a cat. There he is. Super cute. Look at his little chin. Amazing. What a cute little guy. I read the first few pages in the store and it starts off with this cat being attacked by zombies and then this guy saves the cat and then the cat kind of joins the squad. I don't read a lot of mangas or like graphic novels because they take a lot of space, especially mangas. Mangas take a whole whole lot of space if you try to get the whole series. One of the shelves behind me is literally just the Sailor Moon series. And that's not even a long manga, so like 10 books, but it's still like a whole shelf. So what I really liked about this book is that it said it's a three volume tale in one book. So this is it, baby. I don't have to collect anymore. That's it. Just one book. And it's about this cute little guy surviving the zombie apocalypse. Love that. Next book that I got is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. I have been wanting this book since I first heard about it, but I kept pushing off buying it because I was like, I don't know this author. I'm not just gonna like grab any old book. You know, I, I wanna be sure that I'm I'm familiar with this author at least at first. And then I read the audiobook for The Girl Who Drank the Moon and I really enjoyed it. And I I just went to a bookstore one day and they had one copy left and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just get it. It takes place in a in a world that's very similar to ours, except like one year, I think in like the 1950s. In the 1950s, a bunch of women just turned into dragons. And the family that we follow, uh, the mother of that family didn't turn into a dragon, and so like they don't really talk about it and they don't really know why and and that's all I really know about this book but the cover beautiful I love women I love dragons and so if a story is about a woman dragon just call me donkey from Shrek sign me up baby next book is a book that I've been trying to read for the last couple of years but every single time I tried to read it was a library copy and because it's a nonfiction book that wasn't really working with my brain because I like to write notes in nonfiction books and that's chaos uh, Charles Manson, The CIA, and The Secret History of the 60s. What I like about nonfiction books is that they're so straight to the point in their titling because what can I tell you, like, I could, it's about Charles Manson, The CIA, and The Secret History of the 60s. Like, what more can I say? But yeah, I've taken out my library copy of this so many times, but every single time I returned it because I was just like, oh my gosh, I want to underline, I want to write notes, I want to highlight, whatever, and I can't because it's a library copy. So I found this at the bookstore. And I was like, you know what? I'm finally just going to do it. I'm finally going to buy it. And it's going to be great. And it's a nonfiction. And what is it? A red cover. Why? Because all nonfiction books have to have one of three color schemes. Either they're going to be red, they're going to be bright yellow, or they're going to be black and white. And if you look down here, 
That's my uh, nonfiction shelf. And what do you see? Black and white, yellow, red. It's the easiest way to catch someone's attention to actually pick up a nonfiction book, and it works for me every single time. Next book I got is Everything I Need I Get From You, How Fangirls Created the Internet As We Know It by Caitlin Tiffany. This book is a, also a nonfiction, and it's a sociological, like, research kind of book about internet and the fangirl's place in the internet and the fangirl's influence on the internet. I'm really excited to read this because I am a child of the internet, you know? I I didn't have like supervised internet time, you know, I, I was on the trajectory, that's a lie. Some could argue that I could have been on the trajectory to be a normal human being and then I got a Tumblr at the age of 12 or 13, I don't actually remember. And well, now here we are. But on the back of this book, it talks about the One Direction era of the internet which is so exciting to me because I live that, you know? I too would reblog pictures of Zayn for 10 hours straight. And so I think it's gonna be really interesting to read this book and be able to compare it to like my lived in experience of like being a, a little girl on Tumblr and being a directioner and all that good stuff, you know, the grunge era of Tumblr. And Tumblr has been the foundation for a lot of um, internet trends. And so I'm excited to see how like Caitlin Tiffany explores that. And I think the cover is also really cute. It like scratches, it scratches a part of my brain and I can't explain why. It just calls to me. <laughs> Next book I got was Lapvona by Otessa Moshfeg. I have never read anything from this author before. I know they're big in the like sad weird girl part of like book communities, but I have yet to pick something up from them. Or if I have, I don't remember. But I picked this one up because I saw a thing that said that this book is basically Shrek the novel. And I love Shrek. <laughs> there's so much Shrek, there's way more Shrek talk in this video than I anticipated. But I have been told that this is like Shrek and I love Shrek. And so I'm excited to read this because I want to read a book about Shrek. I have no idea what this is about. I just, I'm waiting for the Shrek vibes. Next book is Elsewhere by Alexis Scheitkin. This book is described as having elements of Shirley Jackson's The Lottery, which if your sixth grade teacher decided to mess you up by making you read that book, join the club because that story messed me up. But it says it follows a community in which girls become wives, wives become mothers, and some of them just disappear. I picked this up also because of the cover. Like this is such a cool cover and it also is kind of giving like Midsommar vibes and so I think it's gonna be kind of creepy in that way. Obviously creepy because it's been compared to the lottery, maybe some like cult action, some unreliable narrator action. I don't know but I really like the cover and I, I think it's gonna be great. I'm, I'm ready to, I was gonna say, I'm ready to enter my weird girl era. I've been there but I'm ready to continue to be in my weird girl era, I guess. Last book I got in this haul is The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Have I read Station Eleven yet? Nope. Did I get this book only because it's 30% off? Probably, but also because the front of it is really beautiful and then the edges is this really lovely blue that I've been kind of obsessed with lately. And so I just, I, I was called to it. It has all these annoying stickers. Am I gonna take them off? Probably not, I'm too lazy for that. Annoying stickers, but they kind of place them in a way that kind of blends in with the cover anyway. So it doesn't bother me that much if I'm being honest. But yeah, this book is, I don't really know what this book is about. I know it's about a plague. So Miss Mandel kind of found her niche because I feel like all of the books and by all, I mean exactly two, have been about plagues. And so, you know, she kind of found her niche and I love that for her. I do have one last thing I want to share with y'all, which isn't a book. I guess it's somewhat book related. It's this miniature book store thing that I recently got. I was at a Tesso Life store recently and they had a whole display of miniature rooms. I recently read The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. So miniatures have been on my mind. I have been so fascinated by them lately. And they had a whole display. They had this bookstore one. They had a kitchen. They had a bathroom. They had a study, a bedroom, a record store, a greenhouse. <gasps> the greenhouse one was amazing. But the greenhouse one was arguably a little too large for my space at the moment. And then the, the bedroom and kitchen ones were cute, but they were really small. And it's like, what am I gonna do with a tiny bathroom? Like, where am I gonna put that in my own bathroom? That doesn't make any sense. And so I decided to get this one. I was walking back and forth from the display for the like at least half an hour because I was like fascinated by it. And then I was like, I don't need a miniature set. That's so dumb. And then I would walk away and then I would, I would just be 
brought back to it and I was just like you know what I keep coming back here I need to choose one I chose this one look how cool it is there's like little flowers and little boxes and tiny books and all that good stuff in the back you can see more detail maybe if it focuses maybe not there it is um, so there's like the, the little tote bags and whatever and it's apparently battery operated so you can like turn it on when like the bookstore is open and then you can turn it off when the bookstore is closed and so my plan with this is to actually install it into my bookshelf you know how like people have those like those like narrow like book nooks i don't know if that's what they're called but it's like usually like of a library or of a tunnel or like a an, an alley um so i think this will be really cute to add to my bookshelf you can't really see it from this angle but i i currently have a sailor moon dvd as like a placeholder here and i i haven't done the measurements but i think they're going to be roughly the same size so I'm gonna put the bookstore there and I think it's gonna be really great. And then maybe after I finish that and I, I finish installing this in and, and getting the batteries and all that good stuff, then I can do a little bookshelf tour and I can show you my little chucherias and I can show you my books, but mostly I'm gonna show you my chucherias because that's the more exciting part. I'm just so fascinated by miniature stuff. They're like Legos, but more detailed. And so I think that's amazing. I have a new life goal where I wanna buy a house and then in that house, I want a miniature house and I want it to have all the same rooms and all the same furniture and I just want to look at it. And that's it. That's all I want to do. I just want to look at it. It's a tiny chair and a tiny, ah, mm, so exciting. Let me know if you're interested in, in watching me do this. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how long this is going to take me. I'm not going to make like a three hour long video of me just like sitting there in silence making this, but it's for children. So I would assume it's probably easy to make. I haven't opened it yet, so I'm not sure, but let me know if that's something that you might be interested in watching. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and that's it. I don't have any closing remarks to make. I don't have any goofs, any gaffs, any boo-boos, no ha-has. We're a serious channel starting now no more jokes no more silliness no more clownery just a formal goodbye between friends and I will see you in another video I'm sure when I don't know but I'm sure we will meet again like ships in the night but slightly more romantic if you want it to be if not that's okay we can just be ships in the night that's totally fine